Okay. 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 What is up, guys? Fan here, and with Za on the other end of the line, yeah, uh, doing another vlogcast for you guys. Uh, right now, as you guys know, is the extended partial lockdown in Singapore. They call it a circuit breaker. Uh, so Za, how are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good, man. Uh, I've never been better. The name circuit breaker is just to CC, you know. It's CC, like kental yeah. <laughs> school. Okay lah, in my personal yeah. opinion lah, uh, it's just mm. a fancy name as lockdown lah. Uh. Just yeah. so lockdown lah, uh. I mean, that's they right. don't want people to panic, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's the objective. But people already panic earlier, so they do, <laughs> I don't think uh, they will want to panic for the third time round again. You know your viral video uh, that you posted on Facebook about oh, yeah. you crossing the causeway uh, during the, I think, I think the first or second day of Malaysian MCO lah. Uh. Second day, second day. So yeah. it actually it actually posted on Facebook and uh-huh. it went viral. Lah. So I'm just gonna show our viewers lah, what I mean. I'm gonna play the clip now. This is 19th of March 2020. Restricted movement order has already been started since yesterday, 18th of March. So I think I'm the like the only soul that go, that's gonna go through that checkpoint in the middle of the causeway, right? Right now, you see this landmark behind me? This marks the middle of the causeway. So it's totally empty, bro. I'm gonna let this lorry pass, then I'm gonna. This place is totally quiet. I'm I'm so surprised. This is like once in a lifetime opportunity. So the video actually went viral. Yeah. So what were your thoughts at that moment when you published the video? Actually, my intention wasn't to be viral. You know, I wanted. Mm to share my experience with just my friends only. I was quite surprised when I got uh, f- the first share, second share, third share. I was like, who are these people and why are they sharing my videos? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and by the end of the week, I, I got like 4,000 views in just one week, you know. And I there was like 73 shares. I'm like, wow, <laughs> okay. I really didn't expect it to be so viral, you know, to the point that people share and then tag other, their friends and some of them uh, also want to, wanted to try to do some, a similar feat, you know. Yeah, because <laughs> once in a lifetime thing, you know, that the causeway, the Singapore Johor causeway uh, is empty, you know. Usually it's so full of vehicles. Yeah, that's right. Congested, you can wait up to two hours to cross the border, uh, which which may take like 10 minutes to cross over, you know. For 26 years, I've lived crossing the causeway every day, you know. Ever mm-hmm. since I was like 12 years old, uh, mm-hmm. since 1993, I've been living in JB Singapore, JB Singapore. So to experience that uh, emptiness on the causeway is really like, wow, it's mind blowing, you know. It's like, man, I didn't, I can't believe that I actually live to see this day. That's why I, I decided to take the opportunity to, you know, record one video. Uh, mm. I didn't, that I didn't expect to be viral so fast. Taking that into mind, I think for the next few videos that I'm gonna make, probably will be uh, something similar, uh, something that nobody else would have done it before. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but the sad thing is uh, you temporarily had to private the video down because uh, you received some negative shares. People yeah. who actually work in Woolen's checkpoint with some caption whereby they say because of uh, me, because of because you, of my... because of you, because of the video, <laughs> because of the video they had to patrol the causeway. 
to ensure nobody is at the middle of the causeway taking pictures or whatsoever. Uh. Yeah, but but it's a it's an it's a public area. It's an open area. It's not a restricted area. I mean, it, mm. it's not like I'm going inside the uh, checkpoint building to do a recording. That one is a restricted area, definitely. But uh. in the middle of the causeway, it's in open area. So why does the top asses in uh, Woodland checkpoint wanted to prevent people from recording such videos, you know. So yeah. that's why probably uh, because of this, my video, uh, they decided, okay, let's stop this bullshit. I'm gonna, we are gonna lock down the causeway. Nobody is going to do some silly videos. And uh, boys, you guys have to patrol out there, you know, just stand by there. <laughs> And and I, I guess the, the those officers will be like, shit, you know, we can have a relaxing time with no traffic around. And yet, because of this bugger, this fella, we have to do extra work. We have to stand in the middle of the hot sun just to make sure people don't take pictures or make videos, silly videos on the causeway. <laughs> okay, in my personal opinion, uh, is. The top management at ICA is stupid lah for them to do this ah. Uh, honestly, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's just an empty course here. It's not a yeah. restricted area. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I mean, there's no traffic. And there's no way that you are going to get hit by a, an oncoming car or a lorry. Although yeah, they are evidence by you ah uh, when you were dancing in the middle of the road ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but when once once I see a, the lights of a, the headlights coming right, then I stop. Let the lorry pass, then I continue. <laughs> so I, I'm sure a lot of people enjoy that videos to the point that they actually share, 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 tag their friends, you know. I'm sure you also enjoy that video, right? Yeah, I really enjoy the video, man. That is that is really awesome and truly a once-in-a-lifetime thing. You know, I wish I had done the same thing when I was crossing the second link. I, I actually went back to Singapore a day before you. Uh, and that was the first day of the Malaysian lockdown. I did document my experience through my GoPro, but I was just riding past. I didn't really stop. You should have done the same thing, uh, you know, <laughs> to actually uh, stop in the middle of the bridge on the uh, Malaysian side. Lah. Don't Singapore side. Singapore side, they will be like definitely calling their asses off, you know. So yeah. I think you, you should have just stopped in the, uh, in, the, in the middle of the bridge at the two yeah. second link. Then just video the scenery, just talk about one or <laughs> two things, you know. But now they have tightened the procedures, so there's no vehicles that actually can cross uh, over the causeway, if I'm not mistaken. Lah. Uh, that was what I heard. You can cross uh, mm. by foot, but not by car vehicle, except for uh, the logistics, uh, the lorries that uh, bring in goods. Singapore. Yes, and uh, if you really need to cross over into Singapore mm. uh, uh, from Malaysia, you have to travel to the second link. And over there, they also have uh, tightened the border control. So oh. it's as easy as it will be. Lah. So it, there's no way that anybody will be able to do any recording uh, yeah, in the middle of the road. Like <laughs> for both on both sides of the border crossing, I earn the title. I am legend. <laughs> you are the legend, man. You are the legend. Power, seriously. Uh. Let's move on. Uh. I want to talk about um your family. Mm-hmm. Like I know for you it's difficult because your wife is a Malaysian, uh. mm-hmm. and for you for yourself being a Singaporean and you still working in Singapore, earning a living here. Mm-hmm. Um, how has the extended MCO and also the Singaporean circuit breaker lockdown has affected you and your family? It's been a difficult moment for me, you know, emotionally because uh, I'm not with my wife. Although I'm with staying with my family right now, I'm mm. staying with my parents. My parents are in Singapore, but home is where the heart is. My heart is with my wife, but unfortunately, uh, she's on the other side of the causeway. She's in Malaysia, JB. I cannot do anything. And I don't foresee this crisis to be over in any time soon. You know? At most, the earliest I can guess will be probably be in June, mm. latest at the end of the year. We do not know how long this pandemic this restriction order will last. So my, my thoughts is with my wife, but I'm glad that she's staying with her parents. So it's not as bad. 
So at least there's somebody to look after my wife. If she had been staying alone, then uh-huh. that would be very worrisome for me. I also have a, a colleague that uh-huh. also is, is in the same boat. He has a family, his wife and children is in uh, JB. And uh-huh. he's, he's here in Singapore staying together with his uh, mom. Uh-huh. But unlike myself, uh, my colleague's wife is originally was from Perlis. Mm. So her, her parents are in Perlis, you know, and mm. that's the northern part of uh, Malaysia. So uh, she's in in JB uh, with her children. There's no other way that she could actually get uh, any help from family members. Mm. At least I, I'm lucky for that. Right now, uh, with the extended uh, mo- restriction movement order, I don't know how it will be. Lah. Yeah, I mean... You know the you know I've been doing a couple of vlogs for those uh, Malaysians who are stranded here. Yes, uh, yes. And some Singaporeans have been helping them by giving food and clothes. Uh, some of them shared whereby they are working here. Both of them, husband and wife, working here. The couple, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but their kids are stuck over there. That, and then there was a bunch of donated clothes, and they were actually baby clothes. Uh. So when the when the lady saw the baby clothing, right, she started to cry. That's when it hit me right there, lah. Like wow, these people, uh, they have no choice. To work in Singapore, if they were to stop working, they, they risk their work permits getting cancelled and uh, unable to find work. And especially right now, with the economic situation uh, getting quite bad, we are not sure how these foreign workers, because foreign workers, honestly, they'll be expendable. Uh. They'll yes, be the first yes. to go. Uh. This really affects the Malaysians who are working here. The impact is really bad uh, for them. I also work with a lot of Malaysians and they also... Mm-hmm. They also share the same thoughts, you know. Unfortunately, some of them, they came unprepared. Uh, one of a fellow colleague, he doesn't know that the lockdown period is going to be on on that unfortunate Wednesday, you know. The next thing he know, he, he got the news. He, mm. he has like a few hours to prepare. He, Daida, mm. he has to rush back to Singapore. He doesn't have any other clothing, you know. He only has two sets of clothing, two sets of t-shirts. That's it. It's really unfortunate for um, most of them that mm. are not prepared. Mm. If they want to stay in Malaysia, you know, there's no opportunity for them to find work in the current economic situation. Everybody is laying, being laid off. Uh, most businesses are shut down. So mm. only the essential sectors, lah. Uh, mm. But but then again, a lot of people already working working there. In your personal opinion, right? There has been a lot of backlash from Singaporeans uh, who are saying, why are we helping the Malaysians? They are foreign workers, so we should help our own people first. What do you make of that? That's very selfish. Uh. We have been relying on foreign workers for a lot of our jobs, you know, like uh, cleaning in the cleaning sector, in the um, service sector. They do not want to be in this position. If they can, they want to go back. But because of uh, the current crisis that we are facing, mm. it's very uncertain on both sides of the causeway. Mm. If they go back, they don't have a job. If they mm. come here, they they don't have any protection or any form of uh, stability. We actually, as a Singaporean, uh, mm. we need to help them because sooner or later, we will rel- rely on them for their services. Are you going to be working in as a cleaner, roadside sweeper? No, because why? Singaporeans shun this kind of jobs. This kind of job, although some Singaporeans working in that, uh, in those uh, services, in those industry, mm. but majority of the Singaporeans shun this occupation. Because why? Mm. Long hours, low pay. So it's not fair for us to say that we don't want them. Yet, at the same time, we require them to work in this kind of jobs. As Singaporeans, we are very grateful that we have a good government that actually supported us during this time of, uh, of crisis. We have to in turn give back. For me, looking at it, looking at this this way, uh, all this while, the foreign workers, uh, the Malaysians, they have been supporting our economy. They've, they've contributed to the manpower whereby and filled up those jobs where Singaporeans don't want to take them. Yeah. Uh, despite getting low wages, uh, crossing the causeway back and forth, you know, spending yeah. most of the time on the road. 
I really, really salute these Malaysians uh, who actually sacrifice time to take time to cross over the causeway and then uh, to bring back food, put food on the table for the, their family. Mm. No, I I've, I know a lot of nations living as far as like Ulu Tiram, uh, Pontian, Kulai, Kluang. These are mm. very far away. They are at least about 40 minutes, 50 minutes drive from mm. their home to Singapore. And they have to go through another two hours of jams, through mm. and fro. There's a lot of uh, energy and time wasted. But they do it mm. for their family because they have a goal in mind to give mm. a better life for their family. Okay, so I want to talk about the recent uh, circuit breaker extension. Okay, mm. and the circuit breaker extension has resulted in a lot more mm. closures of uh, food and beverage uh, mm. shops such as bubble tea, such as those stand and shops, despite the government telling the people, like, we're going to close all the bubble tea, we're going to close that uh, non-essential, so-called non-essential. Uh. What do you make of these people who actually went to queue for hours at the bubble tea shops? It's, it's crazy, you know. In my personal opinion, uh, mm. it's like bubble tea is life. <laughs> you cannot live without bubble tea. It's like as though one month you never drink bubble tea, you will die. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I find it silly, you know, just because the government say, okay, certain standalone shops, uh, dessert shops will have to be closed because they are non essential. Oh shit! My essential life! My bubble tea! <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It reminds me uh, of when Singapore, the Singapore government announced the circuit breaker, uh, the first, the start of the circuit breaker, right? Everybody, uh, the old folks were like flooding the supermarkets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, and then uh, when it comes to the second uh, extension, right? And then they went to close property, uh, the young ones are the ones that went to queue. <laughs> so I guess uh, we know the, the priorities are relative demographics. <laughs> Not only the people are queuing, but they they are like ordering from uh, online uh, 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 delivery services, you know, Grab Food, Food Panda, Deliveroo. It's crazy. You're crazy. And then they are not ordering one or two. They're ordering like 10. If I was, I mean, as a business owner, I would be happy to that. But if I was a worker in that coffee shop, I'd be uh. cursing each and every order that comes in, you know, everyone that queue up <laughs> in front of the shop just to buy bubble tea, you know, shit, you know how much work I have to do just to prepare like what, <laughs> thousand cups within one hour? You know, uh, Singaporeans are a weird bunch, you know, they want uh, the government to take action to reduce uh, the crowds outside and all that mm -hmm. yeah. and to like uh, encourage people to work from home and all that, you know. Mm -hmm. And when they are doing it, uh, people are doing the opposite thing, no. They <laughs> react harshly. That's why. They, uh, they straight away went to queue, straight away went to crowd at the bubble tea shops, the supermarket. And yeah. we are really failing as a society, you know. I mean, where are your priorities? Touch wood, uh, if you were to crowd, uh, and then suddenly, yeah, uh, you, you, mm. somebody was infected down there, and you mm. accidentally got COVID-19. Mm. Uh, how are you going to live for yourself? Hard luck, brother. <laughs> Hard luck. The, you know, that's the thing. People do not understand the severity, the importance of this, you know. You mm. see, unlike SARS, mm. if you get infected, you fall ill immediately. You show symptoms, yeah. you are sick. But unlike, unlike SARS, COVID-19 doesn't show you symptoms. Even if you are infected, you can walk around yes. like 30 days not showing any symptoms of mm. being sick. Then by, by then, you have already spread to hundreds and thousands of people. Mm -hmm. People are not taking that uh, seriously, you see? Yeah. And yeah, you can already see from the actions. And speaking of what you said just now, uh, like, like as a bubble tea staff yourself, uh, you are cursing and swearing, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen the videos on social media. People yeah, are going I crazy. Yeah, people, people like this grab food rider go and argue with the bubble tea staff because the bubble tea staff say some bad words to him or something. Yeah. Uh, because of the situation and the moment is tense, both mm. sides, both parties are stressed, you know. 
the 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 delivery guy is stressed because he he has to wait so long for his orders and his customer probably will be uh pissed off because of the long wait you know and the the bubble tea stuff the bubble tea shop uh, and the bubble tea shop staff also is very pissed and stressed out because of what all these orders coming in non-stop mm. and then n- with not enough stock how can you actually o- process all these orders so that's why mm. it's unfortunate that, that uh, such uh, fights happen that such incident happen but mm. and again, singaporeans have to be blamed for that i think singaporeans expect the level of service to maintain despite being in a crisis i think some of these people they don't really know how to uh, be aware of what is happening what is going what is going on in the surroundings you know mm-hmm. like definitely you'll see a crowd flooding the bubble tea shop ah. definitely you're not going to expect the same level of uh, service that you expect on a regular day what some people just don't don't know how to switch they are, after that uh, uh, and then they are still insistent on having uh oh. what they want despite yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, despite the queues being long uh that, that is why that is why they flood the bubble tea, bubble tea shop in the first place mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay there is a malay saying you know uh, uh. That, uh about this ikut rasa badan uh binasa ikut nafsu lesu which means if you follow your desires you will definitely mm. uh be have an adverse effect on yourself Mm. Because this one is all desires, you know. You know, just because oh shit, I need bubble tea, man. <laughs> this is our own personal uh, temptation, desires. Yeah. Oh, I need bubble tea. That is your own personal desire. That is the one that caused a lot of. Um, that is the one that caused this adversity to happen, incidents to happen. For me, right, I feel personally that Singaporeans should be more mindful. They should be more patient. They should be more aware of the severity of this current crisis right now they should not uh, expect everything to be the same like those joggers who are irresponsibly you know running in groups and whatsoever and mm. people who are queuing up crowding the shops going to the panic by panic buying and all this yes uh, yes and especially and, those those uh, uh, I say step healthy living. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's like suddenly, yeah, there's like so many people exercising, going to yeah. parks, walking, pretending okay, la. healthy lifestyle. Actually, yeah. mm. Actually, I get that this is just this is a very stressful time. I get that people want to go out and actually uh walk to relieve stress. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same time, you must be mindful of your surrounding that I mean prepare a mask don't crowd around you know yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, go to, uh, go is, to if is, you see a crowd avoid the place the thing is the government set out certain certain uh restriction if you want to go out you cannot go in a group and you have to go alone so every with that in mind you know there's there's a very loose loose uh interpretation on that regulation mm. so people think okay i can go alone Look, if 1,000 people are going out alone and 1,000 people are going to the same park, it's the same thing. <laughs> so, so, oh yes, I'm going alone, but everybody else uh-huh. had the same mindset. They are going out alone. So it, at the end, what happened? The the place is overcrowded. I was yeah. like uh, riding past Kalang Riverside Park. Mm. There were a lot of people, man. It's ridiculous. Everybody's jogging, you know. And then, can you imagine? You jogging? <laughs> no, all the air being expelled out, and then expel all your germs. And the person that is jogging uh, opposite you, <laughs> and then you breathing each other's exhalation. Yeah. <laughs> if most, if many people keep this up, uh, they're gonna catch the virus. Yeah, that's why. And the thing is, uh, normally I don't see that n- number of people. You know, only during this time when people say you stay at home, everybody goes out. Everybody's like. Healthy lifestyle, healthy lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, the government policies also they are not specific in what mm. uh, what you need to do, what you can do, what you cannot do. Mm, yes, correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, speaking of government policies, uh, 
Mm-hmm. There are people out there who are pretending to be vigilantes. They are normal citizens. They are, they are not even enforcement officers going around <laughs> with a camera and recording people's mistakes. <laughs> and then after that, shouting at them, Hey, wear your mask. Ah, why you never mask? I, got, I, I, I report you to the authorities and all that. Why do people uh, have this kind of dirty thinking uh, whereby they can put the law into their own hands? You, you know where this culture came from or not? I blame Storm for that. When Storm uh, began back in the day, people like recording everything, putting it online, you know, using that platform to shame others. Actually, that intention of Storm is to citizen journalism. You want to report something interesting, something happening, you know, you can do so on that platform. But people are abusing that platform to shame others. So that kind of culture brought forward up to today. So that's why people use that, uh, use that whatever handphone, recording media to record, then put it online to shame the person. Mm. And not necessarily they have to put a storm. Mm. They, they can just upload it to Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. For me, oh. yeah, you gain nothing from doing that. Maybe it's to, like how to say Malaysia, sedapkan ego lah eh. Uh-huh. Uh, these people think that by stitching others, they feel good about themselves. Uh, like, hey, you know, I'm the law, you know. Uh, <laughs> and I feel that like I'm helping people like that. Uh, but mm. to me, this culture, this culture is very dirty lah to me. It makes people afraid to do things that they want to do, you know. Yes, yes, true, true, true. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you lose that sense of trust in other people. Mm. When you want to do something, uh, maybe something good or something, you want to do something good. But then again, you afraid that people might see it as something else. Yes. So, people don't want to do that act of, uh, of kindness just because they do not want people to misinterpret their actions and then become viral. Uh, like what happened in China, people uh, abusing kindness, other people's kindness for their own monetary gains. Do you remember, right? Mm. Yeah, I remember. And personally, this has led to a lot of antisocial behaviors. Lah. Mm-hmm. Uh, this behavior to me uh, is very unhealthy. Okay, so speaking of uh, snitching, uh, mm-hmm. I want to talk about something that went viral recently uh, on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think you know this uh, actress, her name is uh, Atika Mazlan. She actually went to social media, to Instagram, mm-hmm. and uh, clarified with the authorities over home-based businesses, particularly those doing uh, baking, those baking cookies. Because as you know right now, it's a uh, fasting month of Ramadan, mm-hmm. and there's no bazaar. So some people have actually brought this initiative to their homes to actually bake cookies for the festive season. Mm-hmm. But this Atika Mazlan, she wanted to clarify with the authorities and even went to the extent to clarify with HDB over the phone and uh, even the authorities even the authorities themselves are, are not sure of uh, whether it's permissible to proceed with the home based uh, businesses uh, but then when her video went viral mm-hmm. that's when the authorities actually said no you're not allowed to do home based businesses you're not allowed to sell all those items out of fear that there'll be uh, a lot of interactions through those uh, transactions there's been a big uproar online and people are actually were going to the extent to threaten her i just got off i just saw the you know her so-called you know yeah. clarification with sujimi Muhammad on yeah. the live stream uh-huh. sincerely i feel that it wasn't sincere enough and she tried to spin the story. I don't know whether it's true or not. Lah. Whether she wanted to really clarify or there was some rumors about people, you know, were not wanting her to sponsor advertisement or something. I don't know lah, eh. mm-hmm. the story behind. I never really uh, see through it. Lah. What do you make of this? Number one, I never knew she existed. Okay, <laughs> I also don't know uh, until now. Uh. <laughs> ah, yes. Apart from that, I didn't really know that uh, that she's a celebrity. She does all these things. Mm. And for the past two, three days, my Facebook has been flooded with anything related to that incident. Uh, yes. And every other friend uh, sharing it. Facebook is sharing it, talking about it, you know. Yeah. Kind of get, getting uh, annoyed. <laughs> yeah. To be frank, you, that's what I'm feeling right now. Lah. But... I think that, to me that this is interesting because uh, by doing that right, mm-hmm. you have created a domino effect where everybody mm-hmm. 
It's affected. In my opinion, home based business has traditionally been a family and friends business. Mm. You see, most of the customers of home based businesses will be their own family members, extended families, and colleagues, friends. So yeah. there's not much uh, publicity going on, you know. So this kind of business they based on word of mouth. They recommend to their friends, and they recommend to their friends and their families. So, as the business owner, the seller, they have to maintain quality, and they have to maintain cleanliness. Without the trust that uh, is being passed on word of mouth, you know, you cannot do business. Now that in this modern time, with the advent of technology, social media, you can market out to as many people as possible, and yet uh, still maintain that degree of word of mouth trust mm. you see and from there people based on uh, testimony uh, mm. feedback from customers so that is their so called word of mouth advertising now looking into the situation you know mm. people have been using this period the ramadan mm. period earn extra income Uh, you know, you you need a lot of money to spend for hari raya. So mm. if you can some small bis small scale business to just to add up to your income, you know, it it mm. actually helps a lot. So now mm. with this thing happening, you know, mm. the government is stopping home based businesses. Not only the Malays but also the Chinese mm. and Indians are also affected because mm. this is not a one race thing. You know, everybody is doing yes. it. It's just yes. that. Nobody know who are the players. I've known this since uh, a very long time ago. Since ever since I was uh, started doing business, home based business, I know that HDB does not allow any production of food, manufacturing of food in the HDB itself. Go, it's just that you know if nobody is talking about it, there's no complaint. If you have any complaint, the authorities will not know. You can carry on your life as normal. So basically, is the army's uh, eighth rule: lah, do anything but don't get caught. Lah. <laughs> yes, 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 that is correct. Uh. That is the thing. You know, we, oh, I think because we guys we went through NS. Most male person in Singapore have gone through NS. They know uh. this rule. Maybe because because Atika Mazlan is a woman, so she does not know uh. this this rule. <laughs> And, Like they did not give a clear indication, instruction, yes or no. Yes, yes. Okay, you give a certain guideline. Okay, uh-huh. cannot do this. You can do this. You cannot do this. You must not do this. Must help not this. But then again, is it a yes or a no? No, say no lah. Why you? Why you uh-huh. have to? Like, why why you turn the blade blade? <laughs> And I cannot brain the fact. You know when they say, okay, the business person, right, uh-huh. can make. But cannot sell to other other people. You can make. Uh, uh, right. Once you make, you cannot go out of the house uh, to then. Uh, you cannot you engage third party delivery. Then how mm. you want to use what? Uh, like, uh, honestly speaking, the rule doesn't make sense. Uh-uh. Doesn't uh, make sense. Personally, <laughs> I I feel lah. Uh, why are people taking issue with this? Hmm. Okay, it's because. Uh, right now Ramadan, there's no Ramadan bazaar. Nobody mm. can get kuih or their cookies from the basically the yeah. pasar malam the Ramadan yeah. bazaars. And also because like like you say like I say it's Ramadan. Uh, people ah uh, people who have been doing this for a long time ah mm-hmm. uh, have been going about their so called routine lah. Uh, because every Ramadan they will tend to start some call some call of big sale, you know, sell kuih and yeah. all that. Because of, of this current COVID nineteen situation, and then when the government said no after Atikas Mazlan's uh, so called uh, clarification with HDB mm-hmm. and all the relevant agencies, right? That's when it impacted people the most, and people are trying yeah. to find a scapegoat or hey, why like this ah? Uh, and she became the scapegoat lah, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She herself put herself in that kind of situation, and then uh, and then she want to play victim, and the netizen. Can also not play into that game, you know. You just okay. So what if the government does not allow this one? Okay lah, we hush hush, just keep quiet. Mm. Although yes, we risk being fine or that. Like I said, if you do it, don't mm. get caught. Yeah, you know who I blame for or not? 
that person mm. who actually go and record her Insta story and mm-hmm. share the whole world. Ah, yes. I think uh, if the Insta story wasn't shared, uh, sure, okay, it, w- it was just published by people see, uh, but nobody knew about it, no. I think everything will be fine. So the Nazism themselves have themselves to blame, not Atika. To me, lah, yeah. personally, lah. Even though Atika was the one who went and, uh, and took the initiative to actually find out mm-hmm. with the relevant agencies, ah, uh, mm-hmm. uh, the Nazis was the one that spread it around. Speaking of Ramadan, mm-hmm. how do you think this circuit breaker and Malaysian MCO uh, has affected of this holy month of Ramadan for us Muslims and also potentially maybe Hari Raya? Um, definitely, this time around, Hari Raya. The celebration will be very, very different now. You don't get to see people. Mm. You don't get to see your family members, your extended family members. Even if you have uh, Zoom, what's a video call, it's mm. just not the same, you know. Because you know you need the warmth of a person as a family. You need that warmth. Mm. Okay. But if you don't have it, if you only have your close family members, it's not that you cannot, but it's just feel different. Lah. It's more difficult for those people that has been separated by their family. Like myself, I wanted to celebrate Hari Raya with my wife. Mm. This year is supposed to be my turn to together with her to come to Singapore and celebrate my with my family. Because mm. And next week, then will be my turn. Go to her side and celebrate with her family. Mm. Uh, this year should be my turn. But then, with this kind of uh, situation happening, I can't do so. It really affected a lot of uh, people, especially mm. those who are working here. Mm. This then they are all alone. Mm. Nobody else. And then they cannot go back to their hometown to celebrate with their family. Mm. It can be very emotionally taxing. Yeah, I personally agree with you. Lah. This year's Ramadan is off to a very bad start. It's definitely a very quiet one. The Malay community especially because this is our time where we usually have our bazaar, our taraweh prayers, our gatherings, visiting our loved ones, exchanging food buying off our kuih, our cakes, mm. going around to the city, admiring the lights. I mean, <laughs> it's very sad to see Gelang Serai empty. For me, the most closing, uh, I, I don't know, I can, I don't know about you, uh, but I feel, I feel very emotional every time I pass by the mosque because it's close. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I also feel very emotional because I, I miss, uh, see, I want to cry, you see. <laughs> But I'm, yeah, I'm I, actually, I also no. <laughs> I, I also yeah. I, I really miss the mosque. I miss pay, praying in the mosque. I miss putting my head on the foreground, on the ground, and then um, in, in submission to God. Mm. So it's very emotional also for a Muslim, you know, not being able to worship in the mosque. Mm. Although we can worship anywhere, but the feeling is just different. Yes, it's not, it's not the same. You have. In a mosque, when you pray in a congregant, everybody is equal to you. Doesn't matter whether you are foreigner, local, doctors, mm. lawyers, cleaners. You are all the same in the eyes of God. So, mm. it, it's very emotional not being able to do so for a very long time. You know? In two months not praying in, in a mosque, I, I scared that you might lose that love, the mm. emotion, the attachment to the mosque. I think there is a bigger picture to all of this we definitely need to put our emotions aside and we must stay strong lah for mm-hmm. for the sake of our community lah basically because mm. like like you say i mean it will affect us emotionally but this sacrifice is something bigger than just the malay muslim community it's also it involves the whole nation the mm. whole world and they themselves have taken the extra measures of closing of basically locking down the country. You, you just saw Malaysia already, you can see. Mm. They basically locked down the whole country. And because of that, we don't know how the economy is going to be, you know. People are losing their jobs. Uh, people are trapped in their homes, uh, emotionally distraught. Mm. We definitely need to do our part. La. As I think Muslims, this is definitely a test of our faith. But I don't see this trend going, uh, going off, going flat. In very anytime soon. Uh. 
I may be call me crazy, but I wish that the government will extend uh, this lockdown period, uh, the movement control period, uh, circuit breaker. I wish they will extend until the end of June, and even if that is need, just extend it longer. Because why people will be protesting their freedom being taken away, but it's for the better of the society. I really wish the Malaysian government will extend until the end of June. You know why? Because if they were to lift up the movement control order before Hari Raya or slightly a few days after Hari Raya or a week after Hari Raya, people are going to go out. People are going to go back, go back to their hometown and then uh, they are going to visit friends and families. You know, there will be a lot of hugging and kissing. Like I said, this virus, you do not know who has this virus. It can be dormant in person and you can be spreading all over the country and yet you, you do not get sick. So if nobody is going to protect themselves, you, you get what I mean, right? Yeah, I get what you mean. Uh. Yeah, I get what you mean. Basically, people only think of themselves. They don't really mm. care about people. They will just do as they will uh, if, given the, if given the freedom. Uh. Yeah. That's why the governments have to resort to this sort of measure. To prevent, to prevent the further spread of the disease. I can foresee the mm. first thing that people are going to do mm. once this uh, control movement or the circuit breaker ends, people mm. are going to swarm McDonald's and barbecue shop. <laughs> that is something I agree, Iza, <laughs> because I really miss McDonald's. <laughs> you have McDonald's, you have KFC, you have Long John. But nothing beats McDonald's, man. Okay lah. So, guys, all I can say is if you don't really need to go out, just stay at home. Take, we take the necessary precautions. Ah. Help yeah. us, the essential workers, uh, mm. to do our job well. And all the essential workers are actually tired, you know. We should get paid more than what we are actually earning right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to me, uh, the, the clapping, the singing of home uh, is bullshit. Lah. Yeah, like, it's... it's it's actually bullshit. It doesn't help. And I see people, uh, they are using the opportunity to make noise, you know. To, <laughs> to shout at the top of their lungs. And <laughs> yeah, create a curse. It's hypocritical. It's just like masturbating, you know. I call it master, masturbatory cheer. Because why? <laughs> it feels mm. good to you, you know. It feels uh, good. But at the same time, good. it doesn't yes. affect the other person. <laughs> Okay, Zah. Anyway, I want to salute you because for yourself as an essential personnel, uh, thank you for your sacrifice, uh, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not reveal too much uh, on, where, on what you are doing or where you're working. Uh, but thank you for your sacrifice. Uh. I also salute you because you're also an essential worker. Yeah, I work in a hospital, uh, basically. Uh, so, yeah, don't stay anymore. Uh. Uh, I want okay. to keep my private life confidential. Let's <laughs> Once this... Nice. Oh, uh, we shall go riding, uh, definitely. Yeah, I, I shit, I miss riding. So, uh, I, I miss really, man. You know, when I look back at the photos, I was like, yeah, I just want to go again. I just want to ride again. So. <laughs> if, I could again if, I, if I could live that moment again, I would really want to treasure each and every moment, you know. Yeah. I'm not getting to fight with you. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind lah, it's okay lah. We shall improve on that lah in our future trip after this COVID-19 is over lah. So guys, we're gonna end this vlogcast here and uh, we will see you in the next one.